Welcome, welcome to another Meta Monday episode. With Nationals over, normally I would try and cover the deck profile that won the championship. But considering there's going to be 5 to 8 other Digitubers who are going to scramble to cover it, I'm not about the me first life. Today I want to move beyond BT6 and EX1 in its current state, and look towards the future of other decks. For all deck profiles moving forward, the decks on this channel will abide to the restriction list for February 25th, 2022. This means no more Mega Digimon Fusion, and Ice Wall and Reinforced Memory Boost will go to 1. Today, I go over EX1, BT6, Imperial Dramon. And you know the drill! This deck profile covers the card by card, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the combos. This deck runs 5 level 2s, 14 level 3s, 11 level 4s, 8 level 5s, 6 level 6s, 2 level 7s, 6 option cards, and 3 tamers. For level 2s, this deck runs the standard 4 BT3 Demi Vmon and the starter deck 8 Demi Vmon. With BT3 Demi Vmon, this Digimon allows you to draw a card when your Digimon has jamming. Because a larger majority of the deck can give jamming, you'll almost always draw a card. As for Starter Deck 8 Demi Vmon, because you have so many ways to draw or add cards to your hand, this baby will not really be great if it's the first egg flipped. However, mid to late game, this can be the difference between your Digimon if it does not have jamming and it goes into the security and flips level 5s or even level 4s with 7k DP. The only substitute I recommend for this build is Upamon. If your meta has a lot of people that just play Digimon without evoing them, this will allow for draws and instead of that plus 1000 DP buff, that starter deck Demi Vmon offers. For level 3s, this deck runs 2 BT1 Alekmon, 2 BT3 Vmon, 2 Strabimon from BT4, 2 Madoki Betamon, 4 EX1 Vmon, and 2 starter deck 8 Vmon. BT2 Alekmon is your generic 2 cost body that you can just slap on the field to choke your opponent on memory. Otherwise, you can Evo into it for 0 if needed. BT3 Vmon. Hmm. This is one of the coin tosses for numbers in the decks that I couldn't decide on. I decided to go with 2, because with so much security effect interaction, Vmon is susceptible to cards like Geo Greymon. Granted, a lot of your other rookies and level 4s do too, but that X Vmon could get a potential buff from that 1000 DP Demi Vmon. I also added 2 BT4 Strabimon for Tamer Search and Hybrid Search in the form of my finisher, Lobomon. And Modeki Betamon for Memory Blocking. The last Vmons in the deck are EX1 Vmon for the memory gain, when unsuspending once per turn, and starter deck 8 Vmon for the card draw. There were many considerations in the deck for BT1 Gabumon for the draw, but overall I wanted to maximize memory efficiency with this build. For level 4s, I went with 1 BT3 X Vmon, 2 Lobomon from BT4, 4 EX1 X Vmon, 1 Grizzlymon, and 3 Stingmon. BT3 X Vmon is run at a single copy for that cheeky restand if a level 3 or 4 survives. 2 Lobomon for endgame finishers, 4 EX1 X Vmon for the jamming level 4 and inheritable jamming. This guy is your MVP of the build, converting a lot of your level 5s into potential jammers and the new EX1 Imperial Dramont into a jammer as well. But besides that, I put a little defense in the form of 1 Grizzlymon for blocking though you may have a potential swinging into their Digimon instead, with so many re-stands. 3 Stingmon for piercing and also has the ability to give inheritable piercing, because who doesn't want to deal with a piercing BT3 Imperial Dramon? Stingmon also has the benefit of being green for being an extra search off Davis Motomiya. For the adjustments, I suggest tailoring your level 4s to your personal style. For aggro, it's possible to just do away with the Grizzly completely and switch to Stingmon. If you're more a mid to late game player like myself, you might go with another blocker or two. For level 5s, I'm currently running 4 BT3 Pyildramon and 4 EX1 Pyildramon. BT3 Pyildramon is just necessary for the build. Not only does it have jamming, but the added benefits of letting you swing with Imperial Dramon not once, but twice, which I'll go over in the combos. EX1 Pyildramon lets you unsuspend itself if there's a Digimon with free in its evolution sources, which you're pretty much guaranteed. There's only a select number of Digimon that do not have the free attribute as indicated on the screen. As for the inheritables, EX1 Pyildramon makes your Imperial Dramon unblockable. 
Personally, I considered running one Dino Beemon for another Davis target, but I honestly don't like any of the Dino Beemons and feel that the Pyeldramons contribute the most to the build. For level 6s, this build runs 4 BT3 Imperial Dramon and 2 EX1 Imperial Dramon. BT3 Imperial Dramon lets you unsuspend all your Digimon with jamming, including itself if you digivolved on top of a suspended Pyeldramon. This allows for not just one check with Pyeldramon, but two extra ones if you have the BT3 one. Because of the unsuspending effects, you can trigger your EX1 Vmon effects for extra memory. EX1 Imperial Dramon is similar, but you only get to unsuspend one of your Digimon and suspend one of your opponents. That's a potential guaranteed Pierce security check. Again, adjust the ratios how you feel. You might find 7 Imperial Dramon is better. For level 7s, I go with 2 Blitz Omni for the game finisher. Not much to discuss here, this card has become a common finisher in red and blue decks. And believe me, there are only a few outs to this card, being DP reduction which prevents it from saving itself because it will still be at 0 DP. For option cards, I run 4 Hammer Spark and 2 Blue Memory Boost. Hammer Spark facilitates combo extending. At 1 memory with a Hammer Spark, you could still potentially play Imperial Dramon either or because of EX1, Vmon. Blue Memory Boost helps with the extra swings for Lobo if needed, and also the Imperial check. Always having the extra memory can make or break the game. The big question for this is, why no Ice Wall? Ice Wall slows your opponent down, but does nothing to advance your board state. Because of this, I want to ensure I find Davis quickly and maximize the option cards that give me memory on my turn to quickly evil up to Imperial for the multiple checks. Finally, Tamers with 3 Davis Moto Mia, the best blue tamer in the game. This tamer not only lets you reveal the top 3 cards and add a blue and or green Digimon, but he also sets your memory to 3 every turn. For strengths, the deck is very aggressive and doesn't really care about the DP of your opponent's Digimon. It also has the aspects of blue that give you memory manipulation and draw power. As for weaknesses, unfortunately like all blue and green decks, this deck has limited removal. With EX1 Imperial Dramon, you have the capability to suspend your opponent's Digimon to attack over them, and potentially check still. However, if the Digimon has retaliation, this makes it a little bit of a tricky situation. Security Control and Three Musketeers is another deck that can disregard the jamming and can blow up potentially your single attacker or your whole board. As for combos, your lower rookies build up to your level 4s and combo amazingly with them. For example, with EX1 Vmon and an evolution to EX1 X Vmon, you can now have jamming that if you also have the memory, you can climb into EX1 Pyeldramon for an unsuspend, and an evo cost of basically 2 memory. Even though EX1 Pyeldramon costs 3 to digivolve into, because the Digimon was unsuspended by Pyeldramon, the EX1 Vmon gains you one memory. Even if your opponent puts you to one memory next turn, you can swing with Pyeldramon for the inherited jamming for one check. Assuming you survive because of option cards or other hammer sparks, you could hammer spark to two memory and Evo into EX1 Imperial Dramon or BT3 Imperial Dramon for another memory cost of two. Unsuspend and swing again. Now consider if this was a BT3 Pyeldramon. You swing with BT3 Pyeldramon, one check. Then, Digivolve into BT3 Imperial Dramon to unsuspend. Gain one memory, and then swing with Imperial Dramon. But because you have BT3 Pyeldramon, you can restand your Imperial Dramon again for a third swing. If your opponent's out of security, simply Blitz Omnimon can take the game. There are many ways to make Imperial Dramon an effective deck. The only downside is, there's no way to get around security control right now. What are your thoughts on Imperial Dramon as a deck? And moving into BT7, what are some other cards you think this set will add to Imperial, if any? Do you think Imperial has a chance moving forward in the meta, or do you think it's nothing but a third-rate deck? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is Digipanda. Logging out.